Welcome to the next in our series of video interviews with senior HR leaders, where I ask what's next post COVID-19. Joining me today is Kerry Dreiber, who is the Executive Vice President of People and Culture and Chief People Officer at BP. So good afternoon, Kerry. Hi, Peter. Good to be here. And you. Um, Kerry, thanks for your time today. Uh, I think what would be useful to start is if you could kind of give us a brief overview of your role with BP, overall responsibilities and, and you know, some key facts about your organisation, you know, uh, and so we find a little bit more about you. Brilliant. OK, thanks. So BP has been in existence for over 100 years and we're in the middle of one of the largest transformations in our company's history. So we've got around 60,000 people globally in just over 60 countries across the world. And we deliver a range of energy products and services to, uh, to you know, companies, to countries and to people generally around the world. Um, so my role, as you said, EVP and um, Chief People Officer for BP, and I lead a team of around 1,700 people. Uh, and that's made up of all the traditional components of HR, as you would remember it. So reward, talent, embedded business partnering, et cetera. Uh, but I also have responsibility for our health capabilities across the company. We're also focused on uh, culture as well, as you imagine, given the title. And that includes um, other aspects such as agility and also workplace, which includes our real estate footprint for the company. Um, so all of this has come together most recently when we restructured BP last year, and we have some new centres of expertise that really reflect that, and in particular focus on our people strategy going forward. Okay, yeah, thanks, Kerry. That's that's really useful. Um, a bit of background is always good. So uh, let's delve back a little bit. I want to go back a bit. So uh, I gather, I understand you were a started as an apprentice. Um, so we're a huge supporter of apprenticeships. So it's terrific to see yeah. what you've achieved to date holding such a senior people role. Um, so just tell us a little bit more about that, your, your start in, in, in your career. Really. Great. OK, so I mean, I did have a very um, what you might call unconventional start to my career. And actually, for a while, I avoided talking about it. So I was a bit embarrassed, if, if I'm honest, that I hadn't gone straight to university from school like many of my peers. You know, I left school at 16, I went straight to work and I joined an apprenticeship scheme, as you said, with an insurance company uh, called Commercial Union. Um, and I had two options after that apprenticeship, really. One was to either take a finance track or to move into personnel, as it was called in those days. So, you know, an earlier version of HR. But my heart took me down the people oriented route. Um, I went into personnel and, um, you know, I've developed my career from there, really. So um, I'm I mean, I'm particularly happy about that, obviously. But a few years later, I then through my 20s continued studying. So I was studying and working at the same time. I did my A-levels whilst I was working. Um, I also completed my CIPD exams. I then took a higher national certificate in business. And then eventually, uh, towards the end of my 20s, I actually went to Henley Business School and undertook an MBA, which I studied for full time, um, completed that ambition as well to complete my education. And I think that's where I realised the impact of being in HR and the impact you can have on a company and the power of uh, focus on people. So um, so that's really you know how I've evolved. And I think really my unconventional start has also made me think much, uh, much more deeply about the importance of education and social mobility. And so they're two things that in my role today, I'm also very passionate about and focus on um, in support of those agendas. Yeah, no, I think that's really, I think what's what's enlightening is that you don't need to have a university degree to start off with you to get into business and to, you know, as long as you work hard and find a path, yeah. really important. So let's move on to more recent times then. And, um, you know, discuss this challenging year for us all. Uh, and I guess let's just just focus a little bit on those those key challenges for BP, you know, during this pandemic, which I think we need to cover quickly. Yeah, no, quite right. So, I mean, COVID um, for us as many has been, you know, a, a human tragedy, I would say, right around the world. And I, I feel really for those people who have been, either been sick themselves or who've lost loved ones to COVID. And from a personal perspective, and I think all of our employees here at BP, as well as um, you know society more generally, I think it's 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 been tough because everybody's had to juggle uh, the demands of work as well as life at home, whether that's homeschooling or just virtual working. 
Um, and certainly for us at BP, we've also uh, been impacted from a financial perspective because you know our financial success is uh, really also impacted by energy prices and demand for energy. And of course, you know, with the pandemic impacting uh, people's travel globally, you know, that has an ongoing impact on energy as well. So for us and many of the economies in which we operate, you know, it's had a real direct impact on our business. And in addition to that, it's our frontline staff who have been, you know, really at, at the sort of coal face, if you will, you know, whether they've been working on our offshore operations or in our refineries or indeed in our retail stations, you know, they're the ones who have to keep getting out into the operations and meeting the general public and, and being, you know, exposed uh, more so than many. So we're very grateful to all of those employees for everything they've done to get us through um, through the pandemic and to keep our operations running. And I would say, um, despite the pandemic, we actually made the decision last year to continue with the transformation of BP. So last February, February 2020, we announced our new net zero ambition. And actually in July of last year, we also announced this huge restructuring program. Um, and we, you know, we did think about that quite hard because we were on a path with our new strategy. But with the pandemic, we also thought, is this still the right thing to do to continue with the transformation at the pace that we were? Because people were already feeling very anxious with the pandemic. But we felt, despite how tough it was, it was the right thing to keep moving forward. Uh, and that's what we've been doing over the course of the last year, really. So there's been a lot. There's been, you know, dealing with the pandemic, our people, you know, being out there, on the front line and also combining that with everything we've been doing to transform the company is it's been a tough 12 months yeah and so yeah you've got that transformation piece happening already which you obviously didn't press stop on you carried on which is really good and so what sort of areas have you seen of how it's because obviously it's helped create change in, in its own way so yeah. just a bit more there about what you know what what, what impacts that's had yeah, it's, it, it's had many impacts, I think, for us as a company, for society in general as well. And, you know, I think there's three things for me that um, have impacted us mostly. Uh, firstly, is at the way that we work, so our ways of working. I think the focus on inequality and how we have contributed or continue to contribute to building back better. And also how companies have come together to really support um, the communities in which they work. So those would be the three things. And I think for us, ways of working, we've had to become more agile. We've had to become more digital. I mean, we're doing this video, you know, um, over Teams, you know, probably previously we might even have met and, you know, recorded an interview. But, you know, it's it's really enabled us to leapfrog, I think, some of the change curve that we might otherwise have taken much longer to, to undertake. And um, that will continue as we move forward. I think then when I reflect on you know inequality and building back better, you know the the pandemic has deepened existing inequalities in general. Um, so I think you know it's incumbent on companies like ours really to do as much as we can to focus on uh, uh, doing what we can to level out that inequality, whether that's a focus on diversity and inclusion. Um, or whether it's um, it's other areas, you know there's a digital divide as well that we're you know we're seeing and we need to we need to help with so at bp we've um we've actually created a much deeper focus on dni and we introduced for example a new racial diversity framework over the course of the last year um, you know there's lots more to do but i think um you know that will continue to to be with us for many years to come and then i think you know also how we come together as communities in support or businesses in support of the communities i should say that we work in um, for us, it was about supporting the emergency services with free fuel. Uh, we also donated food to local food banks um, through our catering partners. And we also were very much engaged uh, through our BP educational service with providing curriculum and, and online learning resources to, to children of all different ages throughout the pandemic. And again, you know, I, I see us doing more of that in the future and continuing, continuing to support communities. Yeah. Okay. Good. And and just let's touch on um, the sort of current well-being crisis that is being talked about, you know, quite widely. And so I guess what plans have you put in, you know, set in, in future for your uh, for your organisation, your employees? Mm. Well, again, obviously, the whole focus on well-being 
on the back of the pandemic has really um, only you know amplified and rightly so and for me it's also extremely important so I hadn't shared too widely but last year I was diagnosed with breast cancer and although I've now completed my treatment and I'm you know, back on the sort of full health road, if you will, it's only exemplified my uh, focus on making sure that we really dial up our focus on health at BP in particular, not just the mental health agenda, which I think has become much more prominent through COVID, but also how we focus on physical health, because the two, you know, if you take care of your physical health, then, um, you know, you're more likely to um, to have a, a better virtuous circle with mental health as well. The two things are very much intertwined. So we've um, we've recently focused on a new health and well-being agenda for our company, uh, and that is now being rolled out in addition to a number of the things that we implemented uh, through the pandemic, whether that's um, support for mental health with things like Headspace or our employee assistance programme, or just managing work and life. And actually, you know, this is where our focus on agile working and hybrid ways of working, which we're calling BP work life will become ever more important, I think. So um, again, you know, I think this is a real positive as much as you can take positives from things like a pandemic. Um, I think this is one of them and our focus on health and well-being and making sure our people are uh, having the right balance in life will continue for many years to come. Yeah, yeah. I mean, again, you you have to take the positives. I, I say all along about this, and and absolutely, well being is right at the top there, which is which is terrific, really. Um, so let's talk about your. You know, we talked a little bit about purpose. I quite like again what's come again. Another positive is purpose. Um, you talked about your purpose and ambition um, yeah. last year in terms of launching that. Um, huge transformation, uh, and and really we're seeing, like I said, many organisations kind of really doing an awful lot of good, which is great. So talk about your the people and culture's role in helping your organisation towards towards that goal. Yeah, no, brilliant. I mean, we've had a, a very important role to play in how we're helping to build, uh, develop, and empower you know purpose driven teams and leaders in our company, which is you know, at the end of the day, what you need in order to deliver our purpose and our ambition. And it's included a number of things, whether that's our focus on energising workplaces through our workplace agenda, through this hybrid ways of working, or whether it's more um, enhancing development opportunities or indeed, you know, the diversity and inclusive uh, culture that we're trying to build. So, you know, the way I see it is that um, our job is as much about ensuring that we've got the right organisation to deliver on that purpose as much as it is around creating the right environment. Um, and that right organisation is not just about structure, it's about the skills we need for the future and how we're going to build those or hire them into the company as, as much as the right culture that we are developing. And the sustainability framework that we just launched, which essentially um, is you know, part of our purpose and ambition, has around 20 aims of which you know, five of those are, you know, a focus on improving people's lives. Um, so, you know, I think that's testament to itself, really, that actually, you know, we're creating this big focus around just transition, including things such as education, health and well-being. Um, you know, these are big areas of focus for us. Um, and my team is playing a big part of not just creating the right organisation and environment, but also how we drive social progress in the world. Yeah. Yeah, I think we, we ran a webinar this morning and, and words like transformation and agility, you know, it, it, there's so many kind of unsustainability. They're all very key for organisations nowadays. OK, yeah. so sec second year of driving this purpose and ambition. So I guess what can you share with me? Um, some of the people and pr uh, culture priorities 2021 and beyond. Yeah, great. Se second year, you're right. And um, I think it's important even in the second year, we actually haven't finished um, what we started. So we've got lots of exciting things that we're focused on, but actually the restructuring that we um, you know, had a lot of work to do with last year is continuing through the middle of this year and probably will be completed um, by the end of the summer. And, and that's largely because we're working across Europe as well and working with works councils. Um, so it, you know, it takes time. We need to do that properly. So that's continuing and we'll complete that really well. Of course, we're also managing the pandemic still um, in terms of how we return people to the office in a safe way and get people back into 
new environments, as well as making the environments that they return to feel different. Um, you know, I think people's expectations of coming to the office now are quite different. Yeah. We want people to come to collaborate, to be with each other and to work on problems together rather than to come and sit in their office and do their emails, which you can do from pretty much anywhere. So, you know, we're getting our workplaces ready um, to bring people back through the summer. And of course, that will vary globally dependent on where people are based. So that's a another big um, piece of work. As I mentioned, we're working on well-being um, and our new uh, well-being strategy. Uh, we're also running a big agile agenda. So uh, my team that focuses on agility um, is leading what I'm told is one of the biggest corporate agility transformations um, around the world right now. So we are, you know, essentially uh, coaching and helping parts of our business to organize themselves for agile and obviously to develop and, and engage with new agile tools. So lots to happen um, and lots to continue focused on. And last but not least, I'd say it's our big focus around engagement. So we've been through a lot of change, as, as you've probably gathered, and big restructuring. We're changing almost everything in some regards from a people standpoint. And the important thing is now to make sure that we bring our people with us. They remain engaged and excited and energized by what we have to do. So a lot of work there as well. Yeah, as you say, it's such a journey that you're this transformation. So you've got to have really good engagement, haven't you? You know, and and explain the journey on the way and bring them with you as opposed to yeah, against exactly. you. Okay, okay, Kerry. And then finally, I guess let's just come to you personally. Uh, you know, a personal view from you and what it's like to be you know a senior HR or people leader um, in these incredibly challenging times. Um, mm -hmm. And equally, you know with this transformation journey that you're going through with BP as well. I mean, you know, give us a little flavour how that's all been for you. Yeah, I think the, the last 12 months have been unexpected in many ways, and I'm sure, you know, I wouldn't be the only one in, in a role of this kind who would say the same. Um, unexpected, but also I would say exciting and challenging in equal measure, you know, challenging, um, you know, for my team and for me personally, as we've been through, you know, really difficult circumstances restructuring the company, but I am excited by our new strategy, by our purpose and our ambition. Um, I knew when we launched that last February, so February in 2020, you know, this was going to be unprecedented. At the time, we were one of the first companies to announce a net zero ambition. Um, but we didn't, and we knew that there was a big job ahead, but of course we didn't, we didn't anticipate the pandemic or the economic impact that um, was going to come at the same time. So, um, you know, as I say, exciting and challenging, but what I would and what I reflect really um, positively on is the opportunity we've had through all of that, not just to get the company through that degree of change and uncertainty, but also the opportunity to impact the communities in which we operate and society more broadly. Um, you know, I'm lucky to be part of a brilliant team who have uh, been able to do many, you know, I think many thoughtful and impactful things over the course of the last year. And, and for that, I'm very grateful. But um, yeah, it's been daunting, but it's been exciting. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're not alone. You know, many I speak to is exactly the same. But it's, uh, listen, Kerry, it's been, I appreciate your time. I know we, 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 it's the only thing we can't control and we haven't got much of. So fascinated to learn about your personal journey so far, your career to date, um, and really the, this huge transformation we're going through at BP. And, uh, you know, good on you for sort of keep, keep sticking to it during such a tough, um, you know, COVID period, really. So thanks for your time, Kerry. You're welcome. Thanks, Peter. Good to talk. <laughs>